Scott, thank you so much. I have to admit, we're mainly just drooling over Sean Garris's hair the whole it's of that hard not time. To. It's yeah. hard not. He turns up looking that good. Uh, it's unreal. Unreal. It takes me days to look this bad. Um, <laughs> anyway, we are ready to uh, get the second map underway. Interesting point uh, brought up by uh, Lurpus on uh, on Twitter about mm. Fnatic on Overpass. They picked it, they won one game on it against uh, Virtus Pro, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are better than Dignitas. It just means that they've won one game and we've seen them on it. Uh, Dignitas, we know that they verbally said they haven't practiced so much, they don't like the new map so much, but that doesn't mean they won't be that bad on it. And Overpass is a game, is a map where I particularly feel that the short areas will favor the more traditional Dignitas style of having players always mm. kind of holding each other's hands, working the angles together. Uh, so there's no reason to count Dignitas out of this just yet. Um, and also, Fnatic labored to their victory over Virtus Pro, who I can tell you for sure had very, very little practice on that game. And, and, and for me as well, Dingtas, you can never write them out because I don't think their key aimers were on point there. I think they were a little bit weaker in the way they were playing. They warmed up towards the end. Dupree was starting to get those shots going. Device was, you know, they're, they're starting to build up. When Fetish is at the top, like they pointed out, there's something not quite ready there. So I think. Coming to this, if they warm up, if they're hitting those shots, it's going to be a different team. So let's take a quick look at the winning moment from that uh, last half. As uh, Fnatic picked themselves up the first map here on Dust, it was Device who was the last man standing. He was in a one on four. And this was what it meant to them. Smiles all around. And uh, fun. Uh, it looked like job done to me almost. It was just like a, yep. Fun story about with Pronex. I was in the men's restroom with uh, Pronex and, uh, with and Device uh, in between maps, and uh, the tension, the tension in the restroom, you cut it with a knife between the two I was players. Gonna you weren't going to say palpable. That would sound a little yeah. bit. Uh, Maybe not a fun story. I had to make it PG-13. Um, was, there, was there more to this? But there's a lot more that you know. What, oh, hap okay. what happens in Cologne dream. stays in Cologne, <laughs> boys and girls. That phrase is said far too much for my liking. <laughs> oh dear. But no, these two teams have a lot to now bring up to me. For me, it is literally, can Diggs players step into this? Because that wasn't the full Dignitas on Dust 2 by any stretch of the imagination. But we've seen this in semi-finals from we, Dignitas we before. It's now a mental thing more than, than a physical thing. Oh God, and we know that's caught teams out bigger than this in even smaller situations. This is a high pressure game and I think we are now seconds away from getting underway into the second map here. Fnatic up against Team Dignitas. CT side will be Dig. Fnatic on the T side and let's see how they go about this. Both teams have their varying opinions on this map but both will be looking to play this one out very well and we're seeing the maybe not so standard start but mostly be focused from Dignitas. It'll be uh, easy to hold on and what Dignitas need right now is a confidence-boosting pistol round win. It'll make uh, the memories of Dust2 more distant. And uh, we'll see whether they can uh, execute that uh, as they go through. It will be Olaf Meister to lead the charge. Flusher for Fnatic. Ready to make his way in towards the tunnels as he uh, sits patiently. Fnatic looking for something, looking for someone to love in the middle of the map that they can quickly find an opening for. It hasn't happened. Speaking of toilets, that's exactly where they were just then, so I see all lining up. Cars just come together like that. So now GW gets the opening frag. It's Dupree that goes down. Is he going to see action here as he pushes through with one? Fetish helps himself to another as well. And Dictus are a man to the good. You back AZ here for a second, but he can't quite pull it off. The combo of GW and Crim strong enough. And Fetish down by the headshot. And Fnatic just gun their way to glory. That's a good start again for Fnatic. Wanting to get those pistols in the bag straight away. Wanting to build that confidence. Take it over from the first map into the second. And that's what they've done there. So straight away getting on the board. But I've got to say, I like the way Dignitas has played this already. I, you know, the way they're kind of controlling around the B side. They're happy to put Zipnix, not necessarily aggressive, but certainly looking to challenge there. And it, it looks quite good to me all in all. So I have to see how this one plays through. But moment, Let's see how they set up. Seems as though fairly similar for Dig. It is going to be Zipnix once again going quite aggressive towards those tunnels. Through the pipe we go, and they are looking to maybe make a challenge out of this. Flusher might know what's up pretty damn soon. Need. We've come through, but no splits away, Dig. They're certainly looking. They're certainly trying to find something. They're weighing up their options. The CZs and corridors like this can come into their own, and no 
Olaf is starting to consider his options now. One minute and ten seconds. I'm not sure if he heard the rotate. They are building. Here we go. Dupree waits. He gets one. He doesn't get the second. The P90 rips him to shreds. As now Fnatic looking to make this as clean as possible. The execution towards B has begun. The long rotates from A. Starts to come into effect as Fetish is doing the damage. Ding Zats are holding on to this and Fnatic are falling like flies. Olaf, the last man alive. Fetish claims it. And that's the power of a CZ on this map, coupled with Ding Zats's aggression and willing to challenge. I think there's, a, there's, there's those points that you make there and I think there's a lack of familiarity of the map that also uh, funnels into that. That'll uh, be a real challenge for How them. How many corners do they have to check that they don't know about? It's all coming out. I mean, this is a, this is a map built for the CZ. So many short corners, short angles. Um, expect to see perhaps eco rounds going to and fro as uh, now uh, Fetish will lead that charge back in towards that uh, B site where he'll set up and that three man setup that you can see in B there on the very top of I'll come back to that train of thought in just a second as uh, AZC's action this is a quick push comes in Zipnix is going to be the first gun to spy Fnatic players as he lies in wait Smoke's doing their job, neither side are able to gain much ground other than the fact that Fnatic got there quickly. And now it will be Fetish to see action fast, or will it be Zipnix? Fetish does get them, it's Pronax that gets the first, now the second. Oh, won't happen, Flusher returns the favour, but there are frags to boot for Dignitas as they find themselves in a four-on-one. It's Crim's the last man standing, that he will be dropped by AZ Dignitas. Turn a pistol round into a two, a pistol round loss into a two-one lead. Nice work from Dig there, and I was a little worried when I started seeing Fnatic gain that rush on. They were starting to get that confidence, they were starting to get that aggression going with the CZs, but did fall away as you noticed AZ with the nades. The flash is just keeping Smokes them back. did their job. Yep. Just took all the all the fun out of Fnatic. All the gusto was removed, and Fnatic now with a very clean eco, looking to probably get this one done. Does it? Oh, maybe to have a chat through. Uh, discussing how they want to go about this map. A little bit of a different setup, Dupree and Device now focusing more towards the uh, longer route through towards A, but at the moment Fnatic going to have to go for a bit of an all-in, I think, and Dupree knows that, and here we go. He does get, <clears throat> excuse me, a good tag towards a couple, but it's it's Fnatic pushing at the moment, but I still feel as though we know which way this round's going to go. So, at the moment, Ding Tass, wait. There's still so much danger on this map, but the nades and every other sort of... Uh, Factor towards a ball-up team will be helping Dignitas out here. Device does take down JW, but Olaf has got himself an M4, so I don't think he's going to be able to stay alive for a minute in this sort of position. He might try, but four players against you. I'm not sure if he's going to get away with this one. 50 seconds on the board. But so far, Fnatic looking a little outdone, but it's very early days. It's sinking in. You don't want to allow the Ding Tess's players to get that confidence and Olaf trying to peek in. But around every corner there is a player waiting. They know where he's going and he finally catches a glimpse of Zipnix, but the fire comes in from every angle. He's gonna try and back out again. It's on half HP, just below 20 seconds. Somehow surviving with these nades and absolutely everything from Ding Tess being thrown in, but device will claim and Ding Tess will get on that three to one. Nice building scoreline in their favor, and this is what they need, though. They need to get these players feeling confident now, and with AZ on 5-1 to one building through. Zipnix and Fetish playing well, but I, I want to see Device, I want to see Dupree getting to that level too. So I'm sure in the next couple of rounds we'll see if they are starting to build that form up. And morale boosting as well, important for Dignitas there. Oh, yeah. Three straight rounds in a row, something they uh, could barely muster on uh, Dust2. Fnatic will be looking for themselves to justify their... Uh, their choice of this map, that's got to be vital for them and, uh, because it's always a risk. They rolled the dice on this one. As they will uh, spy device ready to go for JW and Dupree comes in. Uh, interesting to see uh, device this advanced as uh, he comes in and around now, pushes out. Dupree helps himself to the frag of Krim and uh, it'll be device about to just come around the right hand side on JW. Oh, JW's gone just in the nick of time. But uh, a man to the good, our team Dignitas. And uh, it will be 
Zipnik to get himself the frag onto uh, Olaf Meister. And Dignitas looking very, very good here on their CT side so far. They're always together. They're always hard to find. And barring that rare push into uh, the park from them. Oh, Bomb has gone down, though, from Fnatic as JW gets himself the kill onto Zipnik's device. Downs him in the end. And we're looking at a two-man after plant for them as uh, Flusher and Pronex go through. Pronex down. Flusher alone as he has to get over towards that A site and defend with three, four angry Danes. The bot, the nade right onto the site, but didn't do its job. 4-1, Dignitas looking good. Yeah, they certainly are, and they are building device. They're getting three. That's going to do wonders for that confidence now, getting a little higher. 5-1 to one on the scoreboard overall. Big round for him. Fnatic just looking a little shaky. Don't look like they've got that full kind of form in this, obviously, very early days towards how they may be building themselves into it. But let's have a little look to see where they're going with this time. Still wrong with the AKs, maybe not the full set of nades and flashes and smokes they might want to work with, but Device and Dupree back by the upper park and around that area, looking for maybe an early play from Fnatic. Not going to find much, but I do like Zimnix just trying to peek over from Fountain. No one's going to be waiting just yet. And it looks like Fnatic are taking their time this round, looking for that opener, looking for a player out of place, any misplaced aggression from maybe Dingtas that they could exploit, but. One minute and ten. Digger going to start trying to keep them at bay. Those smokes will be coming into place. Flashes will hold them back. The Fnatic are building maybe to this A execute yet. And enough. Not able to find anything. It is so hard to get into the site, but they are looking like they want this one. Dupree will be there. AZ, not too far away. Device also waiting. See them falling back to the side of the initial bit of aggression, and oh, this Molotov could do wonders for Dignitas, just keeping the bait. Look at Olaf's health, straight down to 58 HP, slowing them down. Flashes coming in too. Fnatic is struggling to make this final execution push, and Dupree will be waiting, and he's going to find one. Pronex down. Device gets the second. This is going Diggs. Wait until Flusher finally gets in to work with the AK, and this is much better. Finding them on the side, dispatching of them immediately, and easy and fetish. They weren't the first on the scene, but they're going to have to build their way into this breakthrough fanatic. And is that bomb even down yet? No. Bomb not yet to fall. And there we go. It doesn't matter. Flusher and Olaf will pick it up. And a very slow but vital round for Fnatic. Good play from them. And uh, Fnatic get themselves their second round. Now, this is a map because of its size and its complexity, does offer the, the Roma on the CT side more uh, a more free-spirited player the opportunity to just pick up, poke up into one of those middle areas, you know, any of the parks or push it through, and he could get a kill and retreat back quickly. We saw Dingus try to do that two rounds ago. Wonder whether they might try that again. It's not native to their style. It's something that you might expect more of a, a get-right type of player to do, the, the free spirit to go and get that. But we'll see whether that uh, is something that can play into uh, uh, into Dignitas' defense right now. As, uh, as soon as I say that, they uh, do divert to form and sit right on top of those uh, two bomb sites. It's only Easy, the furthest man forward, who will try to jump up and shoot down towards the tunnels, but there's nothing there for him. Grimm's waiting for him to take a second bite of the cherry. He doesn't. Fetish waiting for anyone to try and make their way out of the pit. Dictus. You can see them just huddled together, three guns. This is why I thought this map might be okay for Dinktus, because they are a very cohesive defensive unit together. Sipnix will now go for that second bite of the cherry, and uh, more than anything, that's just him trying to work out where Fnatic are. And uh, the clock is going to play a bigger part to play in that. And uh, now it's Fetish who puts uh, that bullet into the head of Flusher. JW returns the favor, but we'll see who that trade favors shortly as AZ will come around. Zipnix has been picked off, but there's AZ with just a monumental for double frag onto Crimson Pronex. It'll be Olive Meister to do his job on that site and uh, now try to stop AZ as he pushes in. Still three Dignitas players alive, though. Those two Fnatic players have been unable to find him. They do in the end. It's JW, but he's lost Olive Meister and he's lost his life to Dupree. And that will set us up for a 5-2. Dignitas pick themselves up another round. And it's, it's looking a little like us too in a way, but obviously going Dig's favor this time. On the side, Fnatic starting to play that very slow style. 
the very run down that clock, run down that time, and then make that final play. But as you noted, there was at least three players on the B side just waiting to receive them, knowing that that's maybe where they wanted to go. Zipnik's also just popping up and down in mid occasionally, going for the peak uh, through towards the center. But I'm not sure if I like Fnatic on this play style, but then again, it worked quite well before. I'm hoping they find that form. Maybe Pronax calling out to take their time in this build up towards what they're going for. It is only round eight, let's bear in mind. It's not over just yet. It's certainly not done. We are seeing the double CZ choice with head armor. Curious pick up there. Devices early aggression down by the upper park. Picking up the first kill on towards Crims as Fetish is under a little bit of scrutiny there. Does get caught up earlier on with the AWP. Maybe that's just the comfort not f falling into place yet on these new maps with these AWP holds, with those um, standardized uh, angles. But Pronax still trying to capture out one. Is that Zipnix again doing it? Yeah, it is Zipnix just constantly looking for information. It's the only place you out. can get it as well. If they swamp yeah. this middle area, there's no way you can get any intel. Very good point. And while this is going on, Pronax is still here, keeping the attention certainly turned towards the B site. But it looks like that bomb is edging closer towards A. And Maybe these splits are trying to negate what Dingtas were doing of stacking out necessarily these sites that were making it very hard work for Fnatic to get in towards. And it looks like we're about to see this now coming into effect. Two players tucked in towards this site. We do have, I believe, Dupree right at the forefront now, joined by others slowly rotating around as Fnatic are starting to make their push. Dupree finds one. JW falls. Dupree won't get a second as Fnatic push forward there with Olaf. Cleaning up on towards devices, the bomb yet to go down. We're seeing that being put down as we speak. Flusher, big round from him, two in the bag. Now leaving Fetish in a 1v2. He can do this. Flash not going to help. Catches a glimpse of Olaf. Knows where Flusher was. Now surely he's going to expect Olaf here. He knows he already caught a glimpse. 1v1. Oh, Fetish! What a round! Bringing it back in. And the man who leads the troop, who's not necessarily known for being at the top with the scoreboard with plays like this, but he is having a great day. He's having a great day, but he shouldn't have been allowed to do that. Two players caught, very visible in both 1v1s. First of all, they didn't set themselves up for a 2v1 at all. And secondly, it was uh, two, one, two one on ones out in the open that he was allowed to win. Neither of them even inflicting much damage on him. So from Fnatic's perspective, they will be angry that that happened. And uh, we'll see whether they can change anything there. And uh, well, Fnatic will push in. If you notice in that last round, you see where Device is now, pushing out and towards uh, Upper Park on the overview map. That was what we were talking about a second ago. But action to come as Olaf Meister pushes in. And uh, they can just get themselves two in return. Though they've lost their talisman, they've still got everybody else firing down on the Fnatic side. And uh, that last man alive will be Flusher. And he isn't alive anymore. Confidence flowing back into the Danes. And they are 7-2 up. Starting to have to look at the Fnatic side towards what's going on. You're still having Flusher playing quite well, 8-7. to seven, But they're just not seeming to find their comfort here. And we will have the timeout. Maybe, I'm not sure if it was called in by Fnatic or Dig. I think it would probably be Fnatic, if anything, unless it's a technical problem, maybe. But Fnatic need to kind of adjust. They need to talk things through find out what's not working, where the flaws are in how they're playing it out, because they are having problems. They are not having that smooth play they were getting down on before. Their T side on Dust2 was brilliant. They they had the plays, they were leading Dignitas left, right and center. But on this, they're just being stopped wherever they go. The, the stacks out on the sides, especially B, when you have players around Pirla, you got Toxic there, you had the complete setup. They're just walking into it and being caught out. Now, I'm not sure how they're going to get around that. I don't think many teams have the full insight as to how to break every defense yet, but Fnatic need to find something. Yeah, this was a, a gamble pick from Fnatic. It always was. They might have felt confident having played against Virtus Pro, but let's not, uh, let's not remind, uh, you know, let, let's not draw too much into that, given the fact that it was an overtime win and it's one of the few times they've played. Timeout's just been ended, I think. Uh, so we'll be getting back into this. Not sure what it was. Wasn't, if you look over on that Fnatic side, wasn't like they suddenly went for a team huddle to turn this around. Limited talking from uh, from Pronax out to the rest of the team. So not sure what they uh, paused for. But Dignitas are 7-2 up. And Fnatic will look at this as a potentially a massive opportunity lost because they haven't been able to ride the momentum to victory. See what Fnatic can bring now. Obviously, the CC's in play. There's still opportunities for 
are taking them towards A so far. Not going to find too much. Device does start out with a little bit of an early aggression peak, but then kind of falls back into this sort of spot with Dupree setting up that crossfire. So the Molly not quite going where I think uh, Dupree wanted it, but in regards to that, you can see the, the caution they want to take now because they know those CCs can do damage, but Zipnix now comes across to support. We've got Device picking up JW, but Crims did get one back, so not the end of the world, but Fnatic once again lacking that little bit of venom that they had before, that little bit of bite, but Crims looking like he loves those CCs. We saw it being such a key factor back on Inferno in their previous games, and Flushing now finds one, bring it back to that 2v2. This is looking a little bit too possible as Zipnik shuts down Flusher, leaving only Olaf in this situation. 1v2, he roughly knows where Zipnik is. Dupree often plays this site, so I think he's got a good idea, but we know these 1v2s, you can pretty much cut people out, but Zipnik's down low, he's doing great damage here. The CZ now comes out, he gets one. He could do this, 26 seconds left. And can Olaf pull this through? 20 HP against the three of Zipnix. Zipnix would have to get the quad kill to claim this round. And Olaf picks up the bomb. Not enough time to rotate, but enough time to get the bomb down. Zipnix now edging in. He's caught a glimpse. Who's going to get this? 1v1 Olaf against Zipnix. And Zipnix with the 3 HP picks up the quad kill. And that just absolute power behind Dignitas is not stopping. Gotta feel sorry for Olaf in that situation. He made something out of nothing. But uh, in the end, it was who blinks first, who was going to hit that first shot would most likely take the round. It is 8-2, Team Dignitas. And uh, they will be over the moon as they've uh, turned this one around. And let's see what Fnatic have had to, uh, have to offer. There haven't been many close rounds. There haven't been many where you're thinking, oh, it's 8-2, but it could have been, you know, 6-4, six, uh, six, or you know, could have been something different. That was one of the few, and that one the round before. There have only been two rounds where you can really say Fnatic should have won it that they, that they didn't. Got the rub of the green or so. So, the scoreline's pretty just, pretty fair. And with opportunities like this for Dupree coming more and more regularly, so he will just extend down towards that park area, feel so confident that he can pick up those kills and a Fnatic player will be coming around somewhat unawares. He is, uh, Dignitas are always getting that first frag. And it is Crims who pull out. There is a Dignitas player waiting behind him and it will be Device who gets that kill onto Crims. Device goes looking for the next one but won't get it and look how far down Device is. He's actually sandwiched now between or is the he is the top slice of bread in the Fnatic sandwich if we really want to get uh, technical about our uh, lunch making skills. <laughs> There he is, Device. They must they know he's there, but the bomb's moved on anyway. And if Device just comes around the back towards the bench, he will be able to pick off the Pronax. And here we go, it's JW. In fact, he'll find first. And Device helps himself to what is frag number two of the round for him. Now charges around the corner, looks for the next. Scott Flusher going to finally charge him down. And uh, Dignitas are now on the backside of two frags, but Zipnik's an easy close out the round. and. Uh, they're looking good here on Nova Pass. Uh, and I've got to say, Digga just reading this game very well. I'm not sure. Okay, let's put it this way. I'd love to ask a player their, their thoughts on this, and I'd love to get Sean Garris' opinion afterwards. But I'm not sure if it's Fnatic being predictable or if it's just Dignitas reading it really well, because every time it looks like Fnatic are about to go for that sight push, Dig have the overmatch. They always have like a three to two, or they always have the players ready and waiting with one maybe already on the rotate, and it just seems to be going their way every time. And I'm curious to see if maybe Fnatic can catch something out again. They do have, oh, some uh, rather warm feet if they keep going that way. I think Olaf once again gets taken down quite low early on. Double Molotov coming through, and Digger just defining the pace here. Every single place that Fnatic go, a complete contrast to what we saw before, and every little bit of information is being gathered. Zipnik's there, catches a peak in mid, but Crims has taken down Fetish. But will Fnatic now commit towards his B site? Will they rotate? They do have the options. You can see that they're well aware that Zipnik likes this peak and. Oh, Nax. Please be careful. These jumping shots terrify me these days after what we've seen on Dust 2, but AZ is on the verge of something beautiful. Gets one, doesn't get the second. JW powers through. Zipnik's now. Coming on towards site, bomb yet to go down, and Dignitas reading it well, but 
There's still danger amongst Fnatic, but there we go, Device chimes in, and now just Flush Alive. Bomb is down, not ticking. It's on the ground, and Flusher needs to somehow pick this up in a 1v3, 33 seconds. He had a stunning game on the first map, but I think this one's a little bit too... Uh, a little bit too far from reach, and there we go. Dupree puts him to bed 10 to 2. Dignitas looks like they're finally awake. My, my thoughts on Fnatic's attack there is they got a lot closer to the site in that time. Yep. And if they were to, you know, sacrifice going through the park, they haven't had success going through the park, but they have had charging down towards uh, that B site. So maybe that's the point where they can get him, because albeit they didn't ever look like winning that round, they were always under the gun, they at least died on a bomb site. So if they get the rub of the green in a few of those exchanges, then they may be able to get a bomb down and, and they may be able to make stuff happen. But dying a long, long way away from the bomb site means you're never going to get that luck that uh, they are without in the second map. They're being surrounded again. This could be disastrous. It'll be Olofmeister to get himself the first frag. And the, uh, Fnatic do rinse and repeat as JW goes through, gets himself the kill onto AZ. Now they are on that bomb site and they do have that two man advantage <laughs> as the nades come flying in from uh, Dignitas. It'll be. Zipnix to lead the recovery, but he is dropped by Pronax. Only Dupree with a response. It's Device and Dupree to have to do something. They have plenty of money in the bank to try it. Device gets himself the kill onto Flusher. He can spy the prize. And those three Fnatic players just giving a little space. They're ready to make their move in once these nades are in. Coming from behind, Olofmeister with a crucial double frag. And Fnatic have their third round. It is 10-3, and they need to convert that up to give them more and more of a chance in the second half. Love that play from Olaf then. Coming around the backside, I didn't know where that plant was. It, it felt like danger as soon as that smoke came in towards the side from Dignitas and they started to build back in. But I like that play from Fnatic. They stuck it out. There was danger and easy. It was right round behind them by those tunnels at the start. It could have gone very wrong, but they are playing pretty damn well now, Fnatic. That round looking like they're building back into this. But it's the 14th round. It is, I'm not sure if it's too late, but we're going to have to wait and see as already AZ looking like he wants a challenge. I'm not sure if it's the uh, overconfidence, but no, he calms down, slows it down. I was, I was hoping he wasn't going to go for just an opening peak there and get caught out, but we are seeing Diggs stacking out this site, and look what Fnatic are doing. Oh, they're going to go for peak. This could, this could go out very well. Crims catches a glimpse, and aids up and over. And they've almost kind of... Uh, flipped a switch and they've gone, okay, well, if you're going to peek this wall and get information, we can do that too. But this will allow AZ to peek through, gets Olaf down and the confidence, the want of getting these picks. They've just gone forward out there, but already Zipnix looking like he might want to hold this angle. The Swag 7 looking like he wants to maybe catch a couple out and actually Fnatic backing away there. They're starting to adapt around a little. Going to go on the route round the side. Fetish is waiting. Fetish, Fetish falls. And now Zipnix has to come in with that Mag 7 and get the damage done. Tag onto Pronax. Not enough. But Dupree cowering in the corner. Not going to get anything. And Fnatic have powered through. Device, the last man who could stop this in a 1v2. See if he can do it. Fnatic spreading things out. Crossfire is now set. And it's not going to work. Fnatic holding it down to the end. And Fetish falling there, I felt, gifted them the site almost. So, really interesting uh, push in towards that A site. So, finally, we saw from Fnatic a more kind of standard strat that you might see on any other map. Mm. The nades came in, they kept them occupied in the pit area. Nades came in and they pushed in with a three man going in through the pit and one uh, trying to take on Zipnix with the Mag 7. It didn't actually work for them with the Mag 7. The Mag 7 got the first man, allowing, to, allowing for uh, Dinkus to stop the sandwich, but. Regardless, uh, it uh, turned out well for Fnatic and they got the uh, round. It's 10-4. We have a PC crash on the Dignitas side. So uh, we'll see them come back. But uh, they will be looking at this and thinking, we have had a great first half. What will that translate into in the second? There's still that, uh, that element of unknown in this map. It certainly is, and you never know what you're going to have to do in the second half. It's, it's an arguable point that Dignitas do like their CT sides. They played it extraordinarily well. Let's be very honest about this. They have played that CT side very well for a team who vocally said they're not a big fan of it. They get over it and they play it like champions regardless, and they've done the job. Can they replicate on the CT side? We're going to have to wait and see. Their individual players who are known for being at the very top of the scoreboard may not be there yet, 
but even without that, they're able to perform to a very high standard here with Fetish somehow stepping up to play that role on occasion. But they're all getting there. That's the thing, if we do get to that third map, I, I worry for Fnatic because Ding Dust is slowly building again, and Inferno, I don't know, the man on your screen makes it dangerous for me to ever bet against Fnatic because JW can do some serious damage on that map. Um, but all in all, overpass so far, I don't think we know anything towards the outcome. I don't want to write out Fnatic just yet. They're a team that can build. They looked good on the CT side as well. But I, I'm not sure yet. I'm really not sure because they, they just seem to be kind of struggling to make that final bit of impact. Yeah, I mean, look at the, the new faces on that Fnatic side. This is a new stage to them. To the left, you've got people that were on that DreamHack Grand Final stage. Ah, there's the crowd. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the ESL1. Oh, Forrest looks so happy. Forrest looks so happy. <laughs> It's the ESL1 Counter-Strike Global Offensive $250,000 Finals Day. And those crowds have got their seats. They're ready to cheer one of their teams to victory. Except for that one guy who's swearing. That's not cool. But we're uh, ready to, uh, in a moment, get this back underway. Look at Khan there on the bottom right of your picture. He's never far away from the Fnatic side. And uh, Kappa makes his appearance again oh, yeah his almost uh, inevitable entry <laughs> into the game to <laughs> but no got to say it very early morning still as you can see the crowd coming up to CSGO it has been a phenomenally popular tournament tournament overall it's it's great to see CS back at the forefront here many a discussion toward viewership in regards to other games and certainly holding its own and I think uh, it's only going to get better. The guy brought his whole laptop <laughs> in to put that ticket to thing in. Sign. That's amazing. I think that's Dedication. what iPads were invented for, but Shh. nice one. Or paper. Um, paper does the job. You mentioned viewership. Huge yep. viewership online. But actually, once uh, we get later in the day, the queues out the side of the door of that arena uh, are around the corners. Lots and lots of people who want to watch the CS here uh, at Gamescom. I thought they were just there for Spazzy, but apparently not. They were here for CS. I was like, oh, hello. Well, are you guys round the entirety of the uh, venue here? But anyway, we are back into, I believe, the final round of the first half in the second map. Takes it away. Here we go. It is uh, Fnatic to lead their charge once more. The route they're going has been very unsuccessful for them as they make their way through uh, toward Park and Birthday and try and get in towards the main site from that side. But we'll see. A little bit of wind in their sails with their two uh, rounds that they picked up recently. Fetish is the man who'll see action and there's not much of a weapon on that ding to side. That's the big thing that's in uh, Fnatic's favour now. Uh, MP device just pushed away by that... Uh, Molotov as Fnatic now will lead the charge in towards the A site. It'll be device to go in with that Max 7. He's either going to be very successful or die. And it will be success. It will be success for both Device and Zipnix as Dignitas come alive to the sound of fragging as they help themselves to one. It's JW to go one on five to win this round for Fnatic. He has the first. He has only four angry Danes to deal with left. Three angry Danes to deal with left as counting. It's early. never a strong point and uh, JW gets hit heavily as he pushes in and is eventually dropped by Dupree. But uh, that Max 7 doing its job in close range and Dignitas get themselves their 11th round. It's half time. 11-4. Oh, this is dangerous times. I, I can't help but start thinking about the third map and I hope Fnatic aren't in that same mentality. I hope they still feel there is a game to be played. But then you take into account they have struggled to pick up the pistols in this tournament. If they don't get it in this in this half, they're, they're near on kind of done in their in their run here. But we'll have to wait and see how this one comes down to it. Still a lot to be played for here for Fnatic. They still have possibly another map to consider. But at the moment, it just looks like one team was vastly more ready for this map, vastly more well versed in it. Even if they don't love it, they're playing it substantially better. And the strengths of Dignitas, I feel, we're seeing now at the forefront, whereas Fnatic's didn't quite kick into gear. There was no big opening plays from JW. There's no brilliant, you know, individual players shining on this because it's very hard to when you have a site with four players against you. It's very hard to do anything of that kind. And without maybe the knowledge of how to, you know, push and pull Dignitas around this map, maybe Fnatic didn't quite have that comfort. But now they'll be on the side. They don't have to do that to an extent. They just have to read the opponent. Well, they did that quite comfortably on Dust2. There's nothing saying they can't do what Dig just did to them back to the opponents. 
Tweet us your thoughts at hashtag ESL1. Last thought that came through was from uh, Mr. I think it was Food for Hire. Um, I, I didn't see the. Username. And he said maybe this was Dignitas's secret weapon. Maybe they were more than ready for this one. Look, I'm, I'm going to say this. I talked to a lot of teams at the start of the event, uh, especially MBK, Taz, uh, Freiburg, trying to find out how they were doing towards the new maps, you know, their feel, their, their thoughts towards them. And the amount of false knowledge I got given was brilliant. They're all lying. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, you, you, you can't give it all away before an event. And maybe Dig have been playing this a hell of a lot. They have been working on it more than others. but. You know, it's, it's given them pretty much another chance in this. If it had gone the way of the first map, they'd have been done and dusted here and they'd been out in the semi-finals again. But they played it, they played it well, and now they've got a chance to pick it up. It is the first round of the second half. Fnatic need this. And there you go, Kilbim. This event is amazing. You are correct. And uh, this is a big, big round for Fnatic. Win it and their confidence returns in the map that they chose. Uh, Pronex just rattling off shots with those uh, dual Berettas. Saying, come to me. Yes. It'll be a Dignitas push in towards B. This was the push that was so successful for Fnatic. Do they have a counter for it? Dignitas charging through. It's Dupree who should finish off the job. Does in the end. Fnatic have two kills. Dignitas have three. As it goes all hell for leather in this side. There's It'll be Krems to push in. Will he be able to get the better of Fetish? You bet he will. And in doing so, will dispatch of the bomb carrier. And uh, it is now Krems one on two, having lost Pronax. And uh, he will want to prevent Device from getting in towards that bomb. He will notice that it's missing. And then he will go for the shot. But it is dropped by Device's headshot in the combo of the A. Dignitas have themselves the pistol round. If they convert, Fnatic are in all sorts of trouble. Dire straights here for Fnatic on this map. We're going to have to see how they can turn this around. Is there any way? Let's bear in mind, there's still CZ options. <laughs> there is what you just pointed to as an option, the scout. Interesting to see where it gets used because this map does have a lot of jump peaks in a way. We saw how it was being played out by Digger with Zipnix doing the same on that B side. So I'll be interested to see where Crims takes this. And uh, we've seen the impact of, of what can happen when you get a little bit of freedom with these weapons. But anyway. Fnatic now no, backs it to the wall. Dignitas confidence will be sky high, but there, good opening work from Crims, does find device and sends him back reeling, but still no real commitment from Dig just yet either. It's it's the jump shots we're gonna be waiting to depend on, so let's see if Fnatic can find anything here. They need to really start hurting the Dig side. There we go, another tag for Crims. Good work so far, a little bit of a hit and run from him. He's gonna might be pressured then. Just be careful, and here we go. Fnatic taking their time, but not well enough. Zipmix will take down Crim, so the scout is now removed. We're down to the CZ power, but look at the rotate. Look at this behind them. They might catch him off, but there we go. Olaf does find AZ, and right on the backside, they were waiting as Fetish now. A little more cautious. Pronax finds Dupree. The CZs, they're in action. As Fetish finally shuts down some of the threat, but it's all on towards Zipnix now. 1v2. Bomb isn't down, and this this is the impact of these guns. If you play the map correctly, you can change anything. And here we go, Flusher holding the cross. Zipnix edging closer. He's going to check the corner, but Flusher finds him, and there's a glimmer of hope, and I mean a small, small glimmer. I think that was a, a sign of a little, uh, little lacking of map familiarity. They didn't look left. And that was the worst sentence I've ever tried to construct as it just It was fantastic. Right it's, a, it's still early. I'm going to use that until it gets past 12 in the afternoon at least. 12-5 to Dignitas. And I think that's what happened on the first map. In fact, Fnatic won the pistol round and then lost the following uh, uh, round. So history repeats itself. Can it repeat itself all the way through as uh, Dignitas will charge in towards the park and lead their assault onto this Fnatic team. Fnatic have Halfmeister waiting. They will still come charging at him, and Zipnix gets a better of Olofmeister, who will absolutely kick himself for that. Crims, ready to avenge, does exactly that. Device goes down, Crims on fire with three, and uh, he will get the fourth. Could this be the ace? You bet it is! Awesome play from Crims, and he wipes out the entire Dignitas side. Well, it's certainly a good start on the comeback train. If there's any point to do it, it's going to have to be now 12 to 6. Crims, the man who caused many a pain with the CZ, getting himself 
right to the top of the scoreboard, 15 to 3, feeling confident, feeling ready now. And let's see if they can once again shut down Dignitas. Because it's still very possible. This is a, you know, a game where it's based round by round by round. And it looks like we're seeing a very decisive play from Dignitas here, looking to utilize those CZs. Close range, Pro Axo has none of it, goes aggressive, gets taken down. But Fedanik come out overall with a 3 to 1 exchange until Fetish finally gets in towards this side. But it does get picked up by JW, but it's AZ now 1v2. And they've done a lot of damage here, Dig. They're not making this cheap. And AZ will fall. And Fnatic build up to 12 to 7. That scoreline suddenly not looking so one sided. Fnatic pull it back. Only five rounds the cushion for Dignitas, but that's still a mighty cushion. And for them, they'll be thinking now is the time. Buy round for them. Continue to make it expensive as well. If you noticed, Fnatic. Whenever they won the rounds on uh, on their T side, because this was a round where we uh, a map where we traded so many frags from both sides, they were very quickly forcing Dig onto saves, and that may equally play out for Fnatic on their CTs. Dig getting themselves kills. So, easy pushing oh, through no. the lower park over towards A main as they sit waiting for them. Crims lies. In wait, all of Meister opens up with two. Fnatic struck down that attack in motion. And let's see whether all Meister can add to his collection. Yes, uh, he makes amends for the last map. Yes, uh, sorry for the last round as now it is Device pushing in. Fnatic happy to have those two kills. Then they want more, and they're gonna get one more. Device is gonna get in and finally stop all Meister, but it cost him some 90 uh, points of health or so. And uh, Device goes across now. Doesn't know that Krims is there. Krims hasn't shown whilst all of Meister has been marching around, dispatching the players. Krims has just been sat passively waiting for someone to come in, and now it's all on Fetish. He'll say, if you want to be ill disciplined and put your head up, I'll take it off. But uh, Fetish. Without the bomb as well for once. So they're going to go up against Crims. Gets himself the kill. A great round from Fnatic. Four men alive at the end of it. Oh, Meister with three. And it is 12-8. You start worrying when you see Olaf playing like that. That is a big play. And I wanted to, it, it was just great, the cohesion of it. I think it was Crims who was waiting in like the storage room right in front of you, where we're, right now, uh, where we're looking at right now. And as soon as those smokes and flashes start coming in towards the A side, he must have said, push now you know, and Olaf read the situation well and he just came around the best time in court pretty much two to three completely off guard and that little bit of confidence that little edge has got Fnatic one step closer 21st round now coming in we're seeing a similar start um, to how Ding just played it out two players getting a little aggressive early on down towards the upper park side uh, gotta be careful though we do have this in action so you can see maybe why they backed away but Fetish has found JW so a good opening kill for Dig. I'm not sure if it's going to really open up the site too much. There's still a lot of fanatic presence here. But it's not a bad way, or not a bad person to take down straight away. JW is a big player in these situations. But Dig, yet to commit. Fetish on his own by B. A little bit of support. Oh, I think he just got a glimpse of Pronax only. I think he took him a little lower. But there's no full commitment, and Dig is still working their way through the map. A mixed bag by. But right now, Pronax is being challenged on all French. Fetish gets a second. Now B looking a little bit more tasty, but it looks like the bomb is actually heading over towards A. Two players still here for Fnatic. This could be dangerous, but let's see how it goes. Dupree gets stopped. Crims gets a double. That is Zipnik's following suit, and this is not looking so smooth now. But here comes the reinforcements. AZ finds Crims. A looks a little more vulnerable, but look at Olaf, the man who did wonders last round, looking like he wants to do it again. Comes in, gets a double for himself, and Fetish now left. To have to pick up the quad kill if he wants to stop this building trend from Fnatic on V2. Don't tell me you can do this again. He's done it before, but not today. Flasher shuts him down, and Fnatic are starting to look a little dangerous here. The two XLGB players are coming alive on that A site. Absolutely beautiful play from those two. And there's only three rounds of difference. And, well, Dignitas with a great first half, with the pistol. We were already talking about Inferno, which would be our third map. <laughs> and now, Stories of Fnatic's demise have been greatly exaggerated as they'll push out. Look at this, a bit more uh, front from Fnatic here. They don't want to concede all of the map just yet. They'll have Crims in there uh, waiting to push out as uh, Olaf Meister is ready to go there too. Device will... 
charge and Crimson Oldmeister will set up that A defense once again. It's a quick push from Dignitas and it will play right into the hands of those two. Or will it? Sipnix gets himself the first kill. Crimson JW will get more and Fnatic have uh, cleaned out this side. But Device picked up that M4 and uh, he is still alive and dangerous with three players to find. He will. Ooh. It was 50 50 before doing <laughs> well or not. And in the end, it didn't play out for him. Now, it is just 12-10 as uh, Fnatic oh. getting out that round. The comeback is real. Uh, I think uh, Dignitas are going to start worrying now. Uh, Fnatic have that confidence, and I like the way they're playing this. Whether or not they meant to, then I like the little aggression from Fnatic, kind of peeking out by A, getting the information that, okay, I think we've got a glimpse of one or two of those CZs. Let's fall back. Crims wasn't in that little storage room. He played it at range, because we know those CZs can just kind of spray someone down in an instant. And I think we're doing, seeing something similar again. Crims looking for the early information, not getting too much. Pull it back. Really feel the B bomb side is the easier one to attack. We saw for Fnatic, a Dignitas success has come at B. A is easier for those players to lock down. I would have agreed with you, but then JW is such a devastating player with the AWP. We saw Fetish being able to stop it, but it's such, I feel he's like the pivotal player there in the way that if they can get JW down straight away, it's game on, it's, it should be easier to access. The same way when Fetish went down, it was a sight to hit but it's hard to get that consistency, I feel, but I think it's just good play from Fnatic. You know, Ding just aren't playing badly, but they're just not getting into these sides right now. We are in a 5v3 situation. Fnatic, it looks very much like how Virtus Pro are starting to fare against them on this very map, and it did all come down to this A site, so Fnatic are certainly well versed at this. And we ask the question time and time again, why were Virtus Pro running into this brick wall of Fnatic here on A, and we might have to start asking that same question of uh, Team Dignitas very soon, because it looks like they're going to be going into the Lion's Den again. Crims has adjusted accordingly, waiting for the push into the storage room. He catches Zipnix out. Finally, Dupree gets one, but it's a 1v4, and it's not going to happen. It's 12 to 11. It's game on. It's very much game on, and uh, Fnatic right back in it, and look at all from Crims. They are ready to rock and roll. To go back to that point, though, they've got to go B. It's got to happen now. You're right that JW is a man mountain over at B, but you can counter him with nades. And uh, that's what's going to have to change. It's what changed for Fnatic. When they couldn't get past uh, in towards B, they did mix up the nades, tossing in from the pit area and then executing thereafter. And uh, we'll see whether they're able to change things up. They're going to go that way now, and uh, it'll be Fetish to get the first kill. JW goes down, and it'll be Pronex pushing out, gets the first, the second, Crims has the third, and uh, Device will eventually stop that rock. Flusher goes in, he's got uh, Device to find on the back, does so with a headshot, and now with a plomb, it will be Olaf Meister to finish off the round, and well, Fnatic show that they're very quick to get the two A players over towards me to shut that down, and it worked well, 12-12. Dignitas, how much are they going to be shaking coming into this? They had the perfect beginning. Everything was working for them to take this to a third, to take it back, to prove everyone that they don't choke in the semifinals. But at the moment, there's something stuck in their throat because it's not going well. 12 to 12, 25th round coming up. Fnatic somehow built back into such a formidable force and running that could really do some damage. Zipnix down low there, buying what they can here, digging his work down so far. Zipnix has taken down Pronax, so this B site is ready and available, but JW, the man who stands in their way, takes two, quickly tries to evade any sort of danger, but gets taken down. 3v2 now. You wanted the B push, you got the B push. Let's see if they can stick this. Crims and Olaf, the two have been on point towards a Cut off by smoke, they're gonna have to kind of push in against the tide there, but Crim suddenly making a bit of a statement in this, gets the second, this is big stuff from Fnatic. If they turn this, Dignitas are gonna be hating how this feels, but AZ on one HP now, up against Crim's 1v1, Crim's, oh, AZ! Keeping Fnatic down and out, and Digger looking back on point now. Huge play, huge, huge play from AZ there. Again, though, it was a one on two where it was dealt 1v1, but, <laughs> Got the B push, as you mentioned, and what was perfect there, what worked there, was that they executed by coming in over walkway and from the canal. So it was a two-pronged attack that worked for uh, Team Dignitas going in towards that site. And now Dignitas have a little bit of confidence, and that number that they need is dropped from four to three to take us to Inferno. And, uh, we'll see whether they can, what they can do about it. Despite all of that, it's only a Galil on fetish. And, uh, Big play from Easy. 
that last round gets him the plaudits. But how well did Old Meister and Krims do to even pull it back to that two on one? They are certainly in tip top form. It's fetish, the, the anchor, if you will. He's trying to find something to just read out in this construction area, just saying, look, there's a player here, there's a player there. He just hasn't had the vision. In the meantime, I think someone has just peeked behind him and said that's where Fetish has come from. They should be expecting Fetish here now. As uh, he'll fire in a few shots. I think it was Flushing who jumped over there, saw Fetish's position, and that's why he's tossed that nade to stop Fetish going there. As, uh, that will force El Capitan back. Still no frags in this one, 35 seconds to go. He's taking just lead with Device towards the A-site. The bomb uncommitted at the moment. May well follow Device, or may not after what Crims has just done. And uh, now they'll move it the other way around. It's Zipnik's the carrier. Fetish the leader as he will push in towards the B-site now. Leads in with Dupree to his left as they come in from both sides. It's four men that'll get this bomb down. And Fnatic are going to have to recover this one well because they've lost a man too. As uh, Olaf Meister fires in towards Zipnik's. Now in through the smoke is Dupree, but he can't see him. He's got players that low health on those dick players, but they've still got guns. Olaf Meister down to one. Dupree is going to go in for his second frag after picking up Olaf Meister. And now it is all on Crims. One on three. Very little time. And he will just want to make get, get frags and make this as expensive a round as possible for Dignitas. He may feel like he can do it, but I have to say I doubt it. And he won't get past Dick, uh, Zipnix. And Dignitas win two rounds in a row. And the tables turn once more. I want to see if Fnatic are brave enough to adapt, to try something different, to try something risky, because their B site, it seems to have been worked out almost. JW's been going down consistently now. They've got, you know, Ding does have the taste of how to get in there. I want to see what Fnatic now do in response. Last time they, they got a little aggressive. We saw it on the first map. Happy to do so. Will they do it again? Well, they, they feel they have the right to now because Ding there are a couple of rounds now from taking it towards a third map. I'm not against that. It's a great CSGO action to begin the day off with, but at the moment, Fnatic still perched, waiting. And here we go, j Blue gets that first, takes down Fetish. That is a kill that you want to get in the bag. And that's going to force a retraction from Fnatic. They're roaming as a pack almost. They're looking for these kills. They're actively searching them out. And Dings are playing a little more passive, even though the CT side seeming the more aggressive here. They've fallen back now. They're switching up the pace. Pronex's calls must be going a million miles an hour right now, but the smoke's nades coming into place. Will Dignitas stick this push off in a great position? Oh, I think he got spotted out there, and that's going to slow down the play coming out from Dig. They're a little hesitant, and has bought a little bit more time for Fnatic. And here we go. Crims gets Dupree. Olaf waits in the wings, catches Zipnix. This is good so far. And now just AZ alive. Not going to happen. Fnatic bring it back again. 14-13. Game's not over yet. Yeah, the Mag 7 in the hut is just crew. It's just beautiful. It's a short-range weapon, and uh, it didn't actually play it to perfection. He gave it away very early that he had it, but still works regardless. It, it is 14-13. One round in it. This is oh, <laughs> this is worthy of an, an aneurysm. Yes. Dignitas ready to go, but a CZ round for them. They'll move quickly and they'll try to find a close range frag if they can. It's JW who fires in towards that smoke and some damage done to him, but Fetish gets himself the kill. Olofmeister will go uh, and return the favor onto Dupree. Fetish, though, has that weapon now. Olofmeister with a nade on towards AZ. Where is Fetish going? He's looking to come from behind to protect that bomb, I think, as uh, Krims gets Zipnix. He may not have many players left to help him out. In fact, he doesn't have any players left. He'll work on uh, Krims, but that won't be enough either. It is 14 all tie game with two rounds left in this one. This is brilliant. It was a brutal round starting off from Dignitas. There was no messing around in that one. They were going straight in. Fetish barely slowing down, but got met with the brick wall of the Fnatic stack out towards B then. And my God, 14-14, nerves, pressure, everything is now on the line. For both of these sides, Fnatic won this done and dusted. They got the first map. They won this over with. Dignitas are fighting for everything now. Let's see what they can do. Who will get on to map point or match point? We're going to find out any second now. T side deciding that this is the better side for them right now, and it has been working. 
but look how many players are here for Fnatic. Look how many of them looking like I want to go. Fetish has got his foot in towards the side. Pronax finds Zipnix, not the best of starts. Flusher gets Dupree. Bomb is going down. Device still kicking as Fetish waits, waits and waits and waits and finds himself a little bit of smoke to hide in, but it's a 2v4 and it's going to be desperately hard to hold on to. Device around the world we go, but the diffuse, the diffuse is coming in. Has it, he's still going. Oh! Flames come in and look at the little dance of happiness. That is how to control your nerves in a situation. Dance it out, but my God. Small moments win Counter-Strike matches. And that was a millisecond away from being the difference between Diffuse or Death. And it is 14-15. Fnatic are one round away from going to the final. And are you not entertained? There's Dignitas are in the last chance saloon. They lost their first map, it was just two. Here on Fnatic's map, they have given everything they can to pull back in. And in this last round, they have but three Galils in their lineup to do something special. It will be, in the end, a B assault led by Fetish once more. The Master and Commander will be down by Flusher. AZ has returned the favor onto his opposite number GW though. And it'll be Zipnix to lead the push through the smoke, looking for Swedes, hungry for Swedes as he goes through. Device will put in the code and put down the bomb. Zipnix has got the frag onto Pronax. His overtime coming our way. It's one more frag closer as Zipnix gets Olofmeister. Flusher has returned the favor. Two on three, it's Crimson Flusher for Fnatic to win, perhaps. Device still nestled on that bomb like a mother goose as he will move away. Flusher gets the kill, the bomb ticks louder and louder though. It's Dupree and AZ versus Flusher and Kerms for the round. Not much time left, Fnatic will get AZ, Flusher gets the frag, Dupree now, one on two, the bomb defuse has to happen, Flusher gets it, in they go, Fnatic are going into the final, can you believe it, what play from Fnatic, and it was Crimson Olofmeister that rejoiced the loudest because they had a phenomenal overpass, and Fnatic take it in two, the Swedes advance to their second major final, Panzer your thoughts, it's a game that I will not forget anytime soon, and sadly enough, neither will Dignitas on the verge of going to the third map. And they just let it slip, and Fetish fought hard in every single step he took, but Fnatic just didn't stop. Relentless, absolutely relentless. Overpass delivers an absolutely beautiful game of Counter-Strike, and the sides handshake afterwards, but it is Fnatic that will go through and, uh, well, return back. And we will throw it over to the man mounted himself, Sir Scoops. What do you make of that? Thank you, Tosspot. Uh, well, what I make of it is crazy. Uh, I do need to correct myself. Uh, maybe I maybe I misset this up earlier. I originally said that Virtus Pro lost 16 to 9, but this map uh, matchup actually went to overtime with almost the exact same setup. They were up 10-5, yep. and then they gave it all back. Virtus Pro did, right? And again, there was one round difference here, 11-4 going in. And again, we almost saw the exact same overtime. But at the end of the day, uh, Fnatic was able to start to work in B better, right, on those on those retakes, and, and that was the difference. Yeah, I think we can safely say it's uh, the meta's going to pan out that it's a bit of a CT-sided map, I think. Uh, so that's how it feels for me, I, I, certainly watching it. Yeah, absolutely. And what you saw both halves was the CT team winning the pistol, I believe, or maybe the T-side team, and then the other team ecoing them back. So... Yeah, um, T-side pistols. The T-side would win, and then yeah. the CT would CZ, eco them back CZ with CZ. CZ goes, strikes again, Yeah, right? because the, the map is so close range that you would get one scout, similar to Fnatic, how Fnatic did. That was no mistake. They had enough money to buy multiple scouts, but one scout's enough, and then you get a couple people at low HP, your CZs get close enough, they take those guns, and sh sure enough, it's like a 3v5 in your favor, and total total map changer winning that second round. And a couple of things I noticed. I mean, first of all, I think Henrik was... Uh, a little bit uh, tricky with us, a little bit duplicitous, because he tried to make it out that he had no strats. And then we saw the Dignitas C uh, CT side, and it was imperious. I mean, the smokes, 
were on point. They used the lack of skyboxes on this map to smoke off key parts of the map. And when they were so far ahead, I thought, well, Dignitas have done it. Henrik's done his homework, and uh, he's going to you know, throw a spanner in the Fnatic works. Yeah, something that we saw that Dignitas was doing on their CT side was they would spawn, and they would instantly throw a smoke into that left B tunnel. Not, not the one that leads to the main site, but the one that leads to the wall that everyone jumps over and things like that. Yeah. They would instantly smoke that off, and then they would have their other guys Molotov the other side. So a lot of times Fnatic was trying to go with quick B pushes, and they were getting shut down early. Um, Fnatic typically, who has like a pretty decent T side overpass, was shut down at B almost every round by Dignitas. Uh, both teams had incredible CT sides. Yeah, and I, I want to say as well, I, I just couldn't believe the way that Fnatic once again those same two players you talked about, Olaf and Krims, yeah. like they were just coming up big on the CT yeah. side, like over and over and over. The, the one thing I thought of in that second half when I was watching Olaf play A, constantly getting 2Ks, 3Ks, that mag 7 round that kept their money up, yeah. they were so low that round, and then the defuse to get round 15 in the fire. We should really rename this map to Olaf Pass, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this guy. Yeah. We didn't even Got rehearse him. that. That Got was so him. good. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're slick. Yeah. Brains and looks, I can't believe yeah. it. Like, <laughs> you know, we, like, we, like, we're always talking about ninja diffuses in the smokes now, right? And now there's a whole new meta, like, I'll just stand in the flames. It doesn't Seriously, matter, man. Yeah. Someone get this burn, guy baby, a firefighter burn. suit. He yeah. just went in the fire yeah. and <laughs> burned, man. Wait, don't give Val many ideas. It might be something you buy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> fire retardant shoes are coming. But yeah, I mean, honestly, like, uh, as you point out, at 14-12 uh, to Dignitas, you think they've had a bad tee half, they've done just enough to limp over the finish line, we're going to a third map. Then uh, Fnatic do that force buy, yeah. and boom. I mean, that's the game changer right there. It must have really yeah. sucked all the life out of Dignitas. Yeah, and we got some stats coming, so keep, awesome, keep on talking yeah. while we walk yeah. through the stats. So something I noticed was one of the last rounds, Device sent a fake towards A. He died without a frag, and you're instantly thinking, oh, no, Dignitas is in big trouble. They're going to lose this round. AZ goes into B, actually, down numbers, it's a huge entry frag. I think he like probably two bulleted a guy in B. Yeah. So that was a huge play by AZ. But then we saw the last round when it was, uh, I believe, AZ and Dupree it was, yeah. in that situation in the 2v2. It was actually a 3v2, but yeah, it was a 3v2 not really a 3v2. Yeah, but not really. Kind of stuck. I, I mean, look, I, I, I want to point out oh. something about AZ's play. And uh, I know that a lot of people are like, well, you know, AZ has been a, a, a fragger. But I've got to say, this isn't AZ's job. Like, you've got yeah. Device and Dupree. Yeah. You've got the double D team. Exactly. And they're <laughs> always going to come up big and they're always going to frag, right? So AZ's job is kind of like it's transitioning into being more yeah. like a support player almost. Like, exactly. it's his job to stay alive. Exactly. And when he has to come up clutch, he can do it usually. I, I think if anyone was to be too critical about his performance, I, I, I think that would be quite sad. I, yeah, I, yeah. I get it. He literally kept them in the game by hitting that shot just yeah. literally the round before, and people are going to remember that last round where he kind of missed a couple bullets. So it's unfortunate that that's how it's going to pan out, but I can already see it happening on the forums. And yeah. It's sad to see that. And we saw as well at the top of the um, stats there, Crims again, like yeah. just... This guy, like seriously, <laughs> I mean, I know Olaf gets uh, a lot of plaudits, and rightly so, he's an yeah. incredible player. But the tournament that Crims has had here has just been incredible. He looked good at Gfinity, yeah. he's gone up another level again here. Yeah, and, and I love seeing Crims and Olaf play together in a site like they were in A. Their chemistry is just phenomenal. They work off each other so well. Crims will hide, Olaf will peek, one will flash, one will peek. If you just watch them play a site together, that's, that's how pro-level CS is played. Yeah. I and mean, they're just becoming like a, an incredible pairing, like a, as good as I can think I've seen, you know? Like maybe they're not going to be quite as good as say like a Get Right or Forest pairing, but already they're establishing like quite a rapport together. Oh, absolutely. And something I love about seeing like m newer school players is such as Snacks, for example, they're not afraid to do out of the box things like run through smokes more often than say a Get Right or a Forest would just because they're, they came from the 1.6 era where that's that scrimmy mentality yeah. isn't really isn't really commonplace. So I love seeing people like Olaf use their aggression and their new school kind of peaks to really favor themselves. I want to point something out as well. Uh, it, it's not really related to anything uh, tactical, but uh, I thought it was a really nice touch. Like I know Fetish must be really disappointed right now, but he's got young players around him, very young players, and I know they're going to be so upset and so disappointed at another semi-final. And we saw there as the camera swept around him, he went straight over those players and put his arm you know, around them yeah. and made sure they were okay. Yeah. And that's just, again, a great captain.
Yeah, and that's something that you can clearly see when you look at the Dignitas lineup is the age differences between Fetish and all the younger guys. Um, so they're only going to get better with experience and people that are kind of downplaying them and saying they're chokers, that's not the case. I mean, they, they just had some unlucky breaks that match and yeah. even the match before, losing the anti-ecos, the CZs and things like that, they're probably not too experienced on the map. That, that map was a coin flip. Yeah. Could have gone either way. So one last question for you, though. Uh, quickly, predictions, LDLC, Nib. Ooh. On that, so something to kind of look forward to in this best of three, which I'm really excited about, is these two teams are really practice partners. They play to get, play against each other more than probably any other teams in Europe. Um, so what you're going to see is a lot of quirky plays, which I love seeing. So you're going to see a lot of weird pushes that you probably wouldn't see in other games because people are going to be expecting people to be flowing around in a certain way and try to find the gap that they know that they've seen before. So it'll be interesting to see like some of the, the different plays that make up this best of three. I'll give it to Nip just because, I mean, they're, they're rock solid on all the main maps. However, I do know that LDLC is really good on both overpassing and uh, cobblestone. So. All right. Well, uh, again, Sean, thank you so much for joining us on the desk. Great, yeah, I'm great gonna miss stuff you. out of you today. It's been emotional. Yeah, great hearing from pro players. Yeah. So uh, we have good stuff. Place. That being said, we've got Red Eye with JW on the stage for an interview. Take it away, Red Eye. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, Fnatic, through to another major final. It's the second time you guys have done it already. You've obviously won in DreamHack last year. It, doing it again, is it as good, better, worse? I would say it's better now, because like, the major we won was the first major, and like these, these majors now feel like so much bigger. It's like a whole new level. So this time, I must say, it feels very, very better. You, you played a team who have been showing us pretty much all year that they, you know, they're a great team with a great in-game leader. They're always difficult to play against. When the maps came out, were you guys like, hey, this is, this is the perfect map choice for us? We were kind of afraid, I would say, but still, we, when we went into the, this tournament, we knew we could do this because we have so much skill in this team and the individual skill is so high in this team. So. We thought everything was possible, but I think teams like Dignitas and Titan is a pretty hard matchup for us. But we, we did it this time and hopefully in the next ones as well. First game, brilliant play, great to win on their map choice as well. And then you go to overpass and everyone's thinking, wow, okay, well they're 1-0 up and it's their map now. Wasn't quite that simple the first half though. The terrorist side on the overpass is pretty difficult because it's, it's so hard to find the frags and the choke points are like so hard to get through on that map. But we knew that we were in a kind of similar situation against Virtus Pro in the group stage and we knew we could do it. So we just kept our heads cold and just went in for the win. And how, I don't know what we call that now, but what about the Olaf Meister uh, Ninja Burning Diffuse? Uh, yeah, that, that was so sick. It was like. Yeah, I have no words. It was amazing. Yeah, it's great to see that kind of play. And then just wrapping it up at the end, it was a 2v2. It was pretty close, backwards and forwards. You, you guys didn't seem to be panicked at all, though. You seemed like, no, we've seen all this before. We're good with it. Yeah, I think we, we as I said, we have so much individual skills. So we, we kind of know that the situations can solve themselves because it's so much skill. OK, not another word to say. Congratulations once more. Fnatic are through to their second major grand final. They will meet one of the new, the two teams who are on stage right now setting up. We'll be back very shortly with our second semi-final. It's LDLC versus NIP.